Soon I'm going to be working on a couple of, of videos about the new designs that are available on FPV Cycle. This is a 4-Ride. It is finally available. The concept of this design was to make a very lightweight, small DJI package, but there's some reason why it ended up as a 4-inch 4-Ride, like Floride, but 4-Ride as in 4-inch. <laughs> there's also a 5-inch version. It's like 62 grams or so. I'll talk about that in the future. And there's a couple other things that are going to be coming soon. But what I want to present in this video is something that's a little bit unique. First, let's take a look at this one. This is the molar frame. And the reason why it's called molar is because there's supposed to be an actual premolar, which is the smaller version of it. But this is a 5-inch racing frame. And this is really an experimental design. It's available for sale on FPV Cycle right now. And you can pick it up and test it. The whole point of this design is to improve the predictability of racing frame designs as well, or racing frame builds, as well as uh, this, the protection of the actual frame. So if you take a look at the structure of this, this is a prototype. The one that's on FEV cycle right now is a little bit different than this, but if you look at the structure, the top plate here is diagonal carbon. The bottom plate here is front to back carbon. The arms go in and butt up against each other in the middle. And you have these vertical little, what I call boots, that kind of go through the entire frame vertically and brace everything together. The arms brace up against those vertical boots, and the whole arch structure on top here braces against those boots, and the whole thing kind of flips open, as you may have expected. So what all this does is it creates a super-duper ultra solid, non-flexing platform in the middle of the frame. And so when you pick it up and hold it in your hand, it is really, really rigid in the center section, and that's the whole point of this design and the whole point of this structure. It is going to change minorly here and there, I think, but people still haven't crashed it enough to... Well, I mean, people have been crashing the crap out of it, but there hasn't been enough braking for me to see what needs to improve. So far, the arches have been performing perfectly fantastic. The arms are relatively skinny. The frame is relatively small. It's still a very lightweight racing frame, and that was the whole point, is to keep it very lightweight and keep it very robust and give it that those kind of new features that people I expect to be looking for moving forward in racing frame designs. I am not a racer. I'm just working on these things really as experimenting and seeing what I can get out of it kind of because like racing designs tend to be the easiest to work on because they don't have to carry GoPros and they don't have to do a whole bunch of other stuff that acrobatic frames tend to need to do. Anyways, the reason why it's not fully, fully finished is because I'm still experimenting with things like this. So if you may, you probably noticed that the vertical arms or vertical fins on these, this frame is not quite like a vertical fin that you've seen on most other box style frames. And I'll show you the five inch real quick, even though um, it's just kind of too big to fit on frame. But the vertical fins, they clip on to the ends of the arms. I'll show you in a second, but you can tell that they're, they're a little bit flimsy, a little bit flexible, but I've kind of pointed my FPV camera down at a fin in flight just to see if it would like wobble or wiggle. It holds up really well. The way, I mean, I've experimented a lot with this and gotten the whole mounting process really nice, but the way it, it, kind of mounts, it's taut, it's under tension, so it kind of holds itself open. This is half millimeter thick carbon. It's very, very lightweight. And as you can see here, I have tested various thicknesses and various formats, and I have different kind of mounting versions of the, the arm ends, which kind of clip on and clip off really nicely and easily. But this is the five inch version. And then I also have the three inch version, which I haven't built up. I kind of just threw it together just to see what it would look like. Uh, I mean, I had it already designed, but I just got it cut to see what it would look like all together in one piece. And the whole point of this one was to have a very protective DJI capable platform for the Nebula camera, the Nebula Nano. I designed this before I knew anything about the Nebula Nano. I just knew it was coming. I didn't know that it was going to be 16.9 only and won't have low latency and just not as good as I wanted it to be. It's really suitable for like whoop builds, fantastic for whoop builds, but it's not quite something that I would recommend for racing at all. But still, that being said, this would be a really cool frame with the Vista unit in there. If we had a nice 20 by 20 all in one, that would stack really nicely in this, which I do expect to come in time. So let's talk about these vertical fins and the whole box shape and what I think and why I'm really presenting this is because I've, I've sort of, I sort of don't know if I'm even going to bother 
finishing the tuning of the clip-on and clip-off of the, the carbon fins to make an actual finished product. I actually think the base molar design is really good as is, and it's been around for like a year plus now, and people have been flying it for a year plus, and I've been getting feedback from them, and it's just been a really slow kind of progression. I haven't really put a whole lot of effort into finishing the design up. I just like doing things slower. The more information I get from users, the the better everything becomes. And like the glide frames that you see stacked back there, that's come from thousands of breaks, thousands of pictures that people have sent me. Anyways, box frames. So I am not a huge fan of box frames, not because I don't like them. I actually think they're fantastic. And I think that there are, uh, God, SFPV, uh, SF, yeah, SFPV, S I think, sorry, I don't know if I said his name correctly, but... There's a frame that Diatone is producing for, I believe, SFPV. I don't know why I'm not remembering his, his name correctly, but uh, I think it's fantastic. It is a beautiful design, beautiful structure. The issue I have with box frames is that they are complicated, they are annoying to put together, and they have a couple little flight issues that I'm just not really crazy about. And so the reason I came up with a different way to mount these vertical box structures is because I prefer the frame to be self-sufficient on its own. I don't want to rely on the box structure. And yes, I know it adds weight, but the end result or the end weight of this whole five inch with the box actually weighs less than pretty much any box frame that I've seen out there. It's like 670 like something grams, 75 grams or something with all the fins and everything. So, and they're replaced, really easily replaceable and you can experiment with different thicknesses and sizes on the front and back and whatnot. So let's talk about vertical frames and box frame structures and talk about the theories and concepts that people have. So a long time ago, kind of the first place I saw box frames being used was really from guys in Sweden, I believe Sweden, they really love their box frames and they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're fantastic. There are definitely in benefits to them in my eyes, when, in my actual hands when I fly them, I definitely feel real benefits. And those benefits are genuinely that the quad does track smoother and easier. And so let's back up for a second, explain why anybody would even consider a box frame. So when you're racing and you're kind of going through long sweeping turns or just any turns in general, you tend to need to, if the turn, if the, the gate is inside a turn or, or within the sweep of the turn, you tend to go through the turn sideways. And that's really frustrating because you're constantly drifting around the track and you can't actually see where you're going. And so the box frames, the whole idea behind them is to try and resist that drifting motion. And so there's a couple of ways that people have come up with as to why these vertical fin things may work the way they do. And I'll go over that in a second, but let's just first look at the forward momentum of the actual box structure. So one thing that a lot of people that prefer box frames think or say is that the front or the bottom or the, the front and the back, they kind of act like wings. So when you let off the gas or let off the throttle, you kind of glide a little bit. So if you look at an actual wing on a plane, the attack angle of plane wings is very, very, very shallow. Like it's, it's not a steep attack angle. So if you look at these fins and just think a little logically about it, I mean, I'm not an aerodynamicist at all and I, I don't race and I, I just take this with a grain of salt. But if, if, <laughs> unless you're at about an 80 degree angle, I don't think that this front and back fin is doing anything to improve any sort of lift whatsoever. And as soon as you come down from that 80, 85 degree angle, even a little bit, the amount of drag that the front and back are generating is going to be far more than any flat carbon arm. So flat carbon arms typically won't have as much width and height. So when you're flying, yes, when you're at 80 degrees, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's probably not generating any more drag than the whole box structure altogether. Also, if you think about something like a wiffle ball, or actually a wiffle ball is probably not a good uh, example. If you think of a tennis racket, which is also not a very good example, but it, just if you think of this, I'm gonna to try to vaguely convey this. If you think of a tennis racket and, and kind of swinging the tennis racket through the air versus swinging a bat through the air, the tennis racket and the bat might have the same surface area, but the bat can obviously swing harder and faster given if let's, this is a really bad example. Let's say they're the same weight, the same everything. It's just the tennis racket has this 
this web pattern of the actual strings that go across the tennis racket versus the bat, which has none of that stuff. The bat is going to swing harder and faster through the air, even though it's a circle. This is an awful example. I'm sorry. Basically, my whole point is that when you have a frame that has kind of all these openings all over it and like spars all over it, it doesn't necessarily improve the aerodynamics. It just causes more areas for wind to kind of ruffle off of. And this is really my backyard science, my conceptual idea of how aerodynamics might work. And please take that with a grain of salt. It's a might. It's a big might. And it comes from me testing a lot of things in the real world. So the vertical fin in the front and the back, in my eyes probably isn't doing anything for lift, but I do think they are very useful because they cause drag, and drag isn't actually a bad thing. If you look at rally cars, the way rally cars drift around turns is they, the, the driver actually has their foot on the brake and the gas at the same time. So the moment they let off the gas, it's braking, and the moment they, they step on the gas, it's, it's go they have 100% control of the wheels at all times. And I know this is, again, a very bad example but um, my weird brain kind of works like this, where in the air, you kind of can benefit from the same thing. Because as soon as you let off the gas, let off the throttle, you are slowing down. And that's not a bad thing, because a lot of the time, you need to slow down really quickly. Brakes are very important, are as important as acceleration in kind of any race. To be able to stop, brake late, and keep going faster. And racing has nothing to do with efficiency, really, because you're burning your battery like crazy anyways. You really only need to stay in the air for two minutes. So flight performance is really everything in my eyes. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe different races are different. But to me... I think flight performance is paramount, and I think having the ability to slow down is not a bad thing if it actually slows down. Now, with these vertical fins on the front and back, I actually don't feel a whole lot of slowdown. And that actually answers the next part of this, which is what happens when these vertical fins are on here. And the whole point of this design is that you can fine tune it. You can take off the front, you can only have the side ones on, you can have longer side ones, you can have vertically up, vertically down, you can have them big fat ones, you can have like jagged ones, whatever you want. You can experiment with it and see what may or may not work for your potential liking. And I just don't have enough time to test all this stuff. So if somebody comes up with a good way to do it, however, I've also moved past this a little bit. And I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. So let's look at the vertical fins now, or the sideways fins now. So something that was presented in a article by Shredicate, this guy a long time ago made an, uh, a, a blog called Shredicate, which is actually really interesting, but he came up with this idea of side force generation. And side force generation is really not that difficult to understand. It's just the concept that uh, you have more drag on the side here, and particularly that if you're moving through the air and you're at a angle moving through the air, well, this arm has enough of a, or a shallow enough attack angle to actually direct air, you know, deflect it in one direction. And so you can actually generate some potential side forces from moving through the air and deflecting air like that. And you can understand this if you just stick your hand out the window of a car. I mean, your hand is not very big. And even if a car is moving 40 miles per hour, you can kind of, you know, make your hand into an airfoil and fly your hand up and down in the wind, which very clearly demonstrates that something like this could potentially help with drifting and directing the quad. However, I personally believe that there's another way that these things are working and there is more importance to the front and the back strut or fin, whatever you want to call it, then meets the eye. So one other way that I've heard other people talk about and I particularly subscribe to is that I don't think these fins are actually generating any side forces because uh, I mean, I've, I've even with this thing on there, I will pump, pump the gas and then turn the quad sideways and kill the throttle. And I really can't detect a whole lot of slowdown sideways when it's drifting through the air. It definitely has an effect but it has a far greater effect when you're on the gas. And this is the reason why I personally think that the value of these vertical fins is more about directing the thrust or just rectifying the thrust coming off the prop disc. Now, there have been many aerodynamicists, not many, two in particular that I know of, that say that the thrust coming off the actual prop disc is not really being flung out sideways or not coming off in a spiral pattern. Whatever it may be, 
I, I personally believe that that is the benefit of having the fins underneath the disc and actually directing the thrust and rectifying the thrust. I might be completely wrong. I'm probably, I'm usually completely wrong in this sort of a thing. But whatever is happening, people can definitely confirm that having box structures does help improve flight performance and does help improve with this annoying drift that you have through turns. Now, I've spoken to a couple racers and some of them have actually tried to tune these vertical fins and there are a lot of box frame structures out there now. Some of them have like these horizontal bars on top of the front and the back, which is just ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. It just improves, sorry, it just causes a whole lot more drag than you ever could want. But whatever that is, that's my personal view of how these box structures work. So now let's now let me try to explain why I've sort of moved past this. So these kind of builds with these huge motors, 2207.5, um, kind of beefy frames to be durable and really like huge 6S 1300 milliamp batteries on racing. Like this is a pretty typical top end racer. When you have that much weight going through the air that quickly, you, you just don't have a lot of control. Like compared to the things that I have been testing and working on, which are these smaller, lighter, um, like four inch, and uh, this is the five inch version, compared to these things, it doesn't matter how much fin I put on that five inch, this tiny little thing that weighs so much less, it will track through the air so much easier than that large thing that I just don't see as much value in putting so much effort into fine-tuning fins to improve a flying pig. And I only say that because the thing is heavy and it's moving so darn fast. It's so darn fast. I mean, this thing is, I can't even believe how much faster racing setups are than my typical acro setups, but it's moving so darn quick that you just, you just can't, you're just kind of putting a bandaid over it by having these box frame structures. And so, my concept or my thought is that I personally think that racing setups and everything are going to start shrinking a little bit because if you look at like Indy cars and F1 cars, yeah, they're quick, but they don't focus on power so much. I mean, all the engines are very similar. There are street cars that are super duper tuned up, but <laughs> some street cars can sort of match uh, Indy cars and F1 cars straight line acceleration but there is nothing else they could potentially match because those things are designed for speed and to be agile at speed and so they are very lightweight they work on heavy aerodynamics and they're designed to work a certain way so i think we're reaching a point in quads fpv and everything where we're very slowly but surely reaching the point where the skill has improved enough to the point where people are starting to look at the setups and kind of fine tune their particular setup and how they want their quads to perform, whether it be undermount battery, top mount battery, whatever kind of lightweight, heavyweight, different motor sizes. Just because you're running a 2204 motor, 2205 motor, doesn't mean you're not competitive against the big behemoth racing frames because a lot of races are not about speed. And in fact, a lot of the time going slower, you end up being faster, especially if you're not that skilled. I mean, for me around the track, sometimes I'm faster on 4S with a quad that's intended for 6S than I am on actually 6S because I'm just blowing through the turns and I just can't control the darn thing. So it's a lot more about managing the craft and your skill than just being super skilled, which is really nice to see. And I really I really am happy to see that going on because people are putting a lot more effort into their racing setup and the racing structure. And I've had more discussions with various racers that are trying to look for their next season setup and trying to look for their their their, their extra bit of advantage right now or before the season starts. So they're just always looking, they're always hunting, they're always trying to find different ways to do things, better ways to do things. And this is just a presentation of one particular concept. If you made it to the end of this video, I hope it was really interesting and um, I really do want to see people use this particular concept and see what they can do with it because I have made it improve things a little bit for my setups, but I personally don't feel like it's enough of an improvement to justify making it part of the frame design. Now, I might continue to fine tune the final um, attachment structure so that I'll make the frame, the base frame, have arms like this with these little 
like antlers I call them on the ends of the arms because you don't need the fins to run but it would be really fun to experiment with your particular setup and see what you can get out of the frame with these particular kind of fin designs and it's really just going to be a for fun kind of testing yourself kind of thing these vertical plates are really cheap and easy to, to manufacture and so I, it's really not that hard to get all sorts of different designs and test things i mean maybe a jagged tooth design could generate more lateral drag and cause more improvements or maybe you want to have a bigger bigger fin in the back and a smaller fin in the front who really knows tell me what you think give me your thoughts give me your comments i'm really interested to see uh, what people think about this and i really made this video first because uh, I, i'm most interested in this stuff and so there's going to be frame videos coming but it is really more of just like a product video to explain and show and so i i thank everybody's support for fpv cycle we are we are working on a couple of things that we want to produce but we just don't have the money right now so we need to generate some more sales and more revenue so that we can produce these next two motors that we want to come out so the next motor is going to be a five inch cinematic motor and it is genuinely cinematic and quote unquote smoother <laughs> It's a really hard word to convey, but it is smoother for a very specific engineering reason. And it is a really interesting motor, but we need to at least break even before we can spend money on that particular motor. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much to my Patreons. And please floss your teeth because it's incredibly important. Thank you. Bye.